Hi, and thanks for watching this video where I'll be demonstrating uh, Combustor modeling in Flownix, a one dimensional flow network tool. One of the many great enhancements in Flownix 2015 is the addition of several Combustor specific components uh, to the heat transfer library. So while uh, simulation of combustor systems was previously possible in, in the Flonex environment, uh, much of the work of implementing industry standard heat transfer correlations uh, was left to the user through scripting and compounding components. Uh, now we've just gone ahead and built all of that into the tool. So what I'll be broadly covering in this video are the reasons for a one-dimensional flow network uh, combustor model, uh, the approach and advantages to, to setting up a model uh, I'll touch on how you model flow distribution, uh, heat transfer processes, as well as the combustion process. And then I'll also give you a short demo of, uh, of the model itself. So during the preliminary design phase, uh, or when considering modifications to an existing design, it's essential to make realistic predictions of mass flow splits uh, through various air admission holes, uh, total pressure losses, uh, and liner temperatures along the length of the combustor. So although they, they are quite powerful, the CFD solutions of combustors are specialized, uh, time-consuming processes and, and are therefore seldom used uh, during the initial sizing of a combustor. Uh, so what network tools allow you to do are predict with reasonable accuracy the same trends as, as a more detailed numerical model with the added, added benefit of, of being uh, really fast um, this allows you to get accurate initial designs, which means less time spent on advanced 3D simulations uh, and rig tests, and, and this ultimately reducing the development time and cost. Some of the advantages of, of a, a one-dimensional network model are that it's capable of modeling complicated geometries effectively. Its execution is uh, pretty rapid, typically only a couple of seconds for large models. Uh, design modifications and parametric studies uh, can be can be conducted um, more simply than than before, and experimental time can be reduced to only a few verification error ex experiments. And also, very importantly, uh, data obtained from from this type of analysis can be used as boundary conditions for uh, 3D numerical models. So, network models like Flonex employ conservation and governing equations. Um, it's thus suitable for incompressible and compressible flows. Uh, and it allows the integrated prediction of flow distribution, uh, combustion, and heat transfer. And parameters such as gas temperatures, combustion efficiencies, uh, gas emissivities, and correlations to predict film cooling efficiencies uh, can be obtained from uh, empirical formulations and, and Im implemented into the network. So if we look at uh, Flow distribution modeling um, allows you to predict the distribution and mass flow rates through the gas turbine combustion system. Um, typically, elements define actual geometry, geometrical features such as orifices uh, and duct sections in the domain of interest. Um, the overall governing equations I mentioned on the previous uh, page are solved within nodes, and uh, pressure drop flow relationship is applied. Uh, for every element, uh, typically defined using the Darcy Weisbach or exponential or empirically determined uh, pressure loss correlations. Obviously, the combustion process is also very important uh, to take into account. Uh, reasons for this are that gas temperature affect fluid density and therefore the flow distribution and pressure loss through your, your system or your network. And an accurate gas temperature profile is required to, to calculate wall temperatures. So within Flonex, there is an, a NASA CEA program um, that can be incorporated into networks and allow the prediction of an adiabatic flame temperature as a function of a local air fuel ratio. And it'll also calculate the chemical equilibrium uh, product concentrations from reactants. If we look at uh, heat transfer process modeling, this is what allows us to predict liner wall temperatures. And we essentially do this by conducting a heat balance along the liner wall. So typically, uh, the wall is heated by convection and radiation from the hot combustion gases, and then cooled on the outside uh, by annulus airflow through convection and radiation from the outer liner to uh, the casing wall. 
So depending on the liner configuration, several specialized cooling mechanisms uh, may also need to be employed, such as film and jet impingement cooling, uh, fluid and surface-to-surface -surface radiation, uh, conduction and convection. Uh, and I'll go into each of these in a little more detail in the next couple of slides. So if we look at internal radiation, and that's radiation from the hot combustion gases, it's typically a major contributor of heat transferred from the hot gas to the liner wall. Uh, total emitted radiation typically has two components, uh, both of which can be implemented in Flonix. Uh, the first being non-luminous radiation that emanates from heteropolar gases, uh, notably carbon dioxide and, and water vapor, and then also luminous radiation that depends on the number and size of solid particles, uh, mainly soot in the flame. Then there is external radiation. This refers to the heat transferred from the liner to the casing. Um, it is usually small compared to the external convection heat transfer, uh, and it's approximated by assuming uh, gray surfaces with known emissivities and view factors. With regards to convection, it's typically reasonable to assume that some form of the classical heat transfer relation for straight pipes uh, will hold for conditions inside a liner. Uh, for external con convection, the Reynolds number is based on the hydraulic mean diameter of the annular say space. And if we look at conduction, uh, what Flonix uh, allows you to do is to create a 2D axisymmetric representation of your conduction surfaces and you can model conduction and cross conduction uh, through those surfaces. If we look at film cooling uh, which is air injected through slots actually along the inner liner wall and what this air does is it provides a protective film of, of cooling air between the wall and the hot combustion gases so this is a critical uh, cooling mechanism that needs to be taken into account or that you need to be able to simulate within uh, within your network. Uh, and this can be represented using several uh, well-known correlations that have been implemented into Flonix. Uh, but another thing that's important to realize is that any user-defined function or, or correlation can be quite easily implemented into, into Flonix networks. So lastly, in terms of uh, heat transfer correlations that have been uh, incorporated into Flonix. Impingement cooling. So impingement cooling is where jets provide an eff effective means of heat transfer and can be positioned to provide extra cooling on, on liner hotspots. So again here you can just see the jet impingement correlation that is implemented in Flonix um, pretty standard uh, within the gas turbine industry. So I'll briefly uh, go over the engine on which the Flonex demo model is based. It's a Rolls-Royce T56 turboprop uh, gas turbine engine. Uh, so the combustor design is is old compared to modern day combustion systems uh, but still widely in use and it has a can annular type uh, combustion section. Uh, if we look at some of the operating conditions during takeoff uh, these are the values we'll be using as boundary conditions uh, for our steady state analysis. So the methodology for setting up uh, a, a Flonix model um, is to first predict pressure uh, distribution and mass flow rate distribution and validate that against uh, test data. Uh, then one would implement heat transfer to that, that cold flow model to predict gas and line of wall temperatures and, and then again validate those results against uh, test or CFD data. And then once the base case is established, uh, the effects of possible uh, ge geometry modifications can be uh, investigated and one can see how it would have an effect on both flow and temperature. So what you can see is the flow distribution network laid out uh, on the Flonex uh, drawing canvas. Um, inputs to these flow components are pretty standard cross-sectional flow areas, uh, flow path length, uh, various admission hole diameters and discharge coefficients. Um, and what I what this network gives me is a look at what the uh, the mass flow and, and pressure drop looks like through through various sections of my my liner. Uh, so once I'm happy with those results, what I can do is uh, from the heat transfer library select components that uh, incorporate all all of the uh, correlations that I, I discussed uh, leading up to the demonstration and I can go and integrate 
the, the heat transfer components with my cold flow model. Uh, so I've just grabbed a convection component there. I can grab a conduction component to represent the liner wall surface. Um, and let's say, just for argument's sake, another another convection uh, component uh, to the, the the hot gas. Uh, so again, inputs to these components are pretty straightforward. Uh, you would, from a drop-down list, uh, select the convection uh, coefficient calculation option you want. So basically, what correlation you want uh, to to be used, or you could specify some user-defined uh, correlation. So what we see here is uh, the the previous network uh, to which we we've, we've added um, all of the heat transfer uh, components. So initially looking at this, it might look um, you know, a little all over the place, a little confusing. Uh, but what you'll quickly realize is that you have uh, reoccurring sections in this network um, that essentially represent different uh, geometrical sections of your, your model. Let's take a film cooling device layout, for example, and take a little bit closer look at that. Um, so again, here you can see from our combustion gases, we have a radiation component that's uh, accounting for the fluid radiation. We have a film cooling component that's cooling down that same surface to which the hot gas is radiating. Uh, we have a conduction element that will account for the conduction through the liner wall. And then uh, in this case, we only have convection to the annulus air flow that's cooling the cold side of the liner. So again, uh, you can model in as much or as little detail uh, as you want here, de depending on, on what uh, modeling assumptions uh, you've made. So the great thing about Flonex is uh, incorporated within the model, we have result reports in the form of, of Excel uh, spreadsheets that you can link to node and component results. And these will update uh, every time you, you solve the network. Um, so it was pretty easy to get a representation of what our gas temperature and, and liner wall hot side temperature look like as a function of, of distance. Uh, so what I'm going to do real quick, uh, just to illustrate uh, you know, how one can make geometric changes to this model, is I'm just going to go to one of these film cooling slots and I'm going to double uh, the flow area. So initially we have a, a flow area of about 64 millimeters. So I'll go and, and and double that and see how that affects our, our liner wall temperature at that, at that section. So I'll go ahead and run this again uh, and we should see that the liner wall temperature decrease. Lastly, just to recap why Flonex. Um, I've mentioned it's a commercial one-dimensional thermal fluid network tool. Uh, that employs the conservation of, of governing equations, mass momentum and energy, uh, which means it's a perfect platform on which to uh, base this type of simulation. It has a user-friendly and modern user interface. Uh, it has integrated uh, chemical equilibrium program. Uh, it has a library that employs industry standard correlations for gas turbine heat transfer. Its scripting capabilities make the tool flexible and user-definable. It has really quick solve time. Uh, it's simple to set up sensitivity and parametric studies. And, it's, and it has an open architecture, which means it's easy to link uh, to third-party FEA, CFD, or post-processing software. Thank you for your time. Uh, if you find yourself in North America, please reach out to uh, Phoenix Analysis and Design Technologies. Uh, we lead us in, in software simulation. If you're anywhere else in the world, I've provided the global contact information uh, for Flonix as well. Thank you.